Welcome to Wine Time. I'm Rachel. And I'm Heather. Where two moms will pour a drink, espresso, wine, cocktail, who knows, and tell you stories or complain about moms. You will get the good, inspirational, uplifting, encouraging, the badass, we all know a badass mom, and the crime. Moms who have committed them and or survived them. This is Wine Time. The good, the badass, and and the crime. Recording. Hello, Heather. Hello, Rachel. Did anyone know our names? Oh, you know what? I was wondering. This whole time. We never say our names. Nope. No one's ever and met you know us what? before. I bet you half the time they think that you're me and I'm you. And I'm you and you're yep. me. And I'm us and we're we. So in order to get this straight, hi, I'm Heather. Hello, I am Rachel. And this is Wine Time. <laughs> Normally you whisper it and I'm oh. on, like screaming like, Wine Time off. <laughs> I don't know why we switched roles just now. Because. I'm Heather and you're Rachel. Let's <laughs> <laughs> really fuck them up. <laughs> You'll never know. You'll never know. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Keep them guessing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of your favorite people you've ever not met in your life or met because some of you know us and that's the best of a... Um, I have to start off by telling you, is my hair blonde? <laughs> A blonde moment because your girl is an idiot. <laughs> oh, I think. What happened? <laughs> okay, so my lovely, 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 lovely co-host, you sent me a little gift box the other day that had a tank top, a cup for myself, and a cup for Joel. Yes. In there, you gave me my beautiful wine time cup. Yeah, it's beautiful. And Kenzie wanted hot chocolate. Oh, no. And I put milk in there, and I put it in the microwave. Oh, no. And oh, no. on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, I need to do a PSA real quick for all my friends. <laughs> if you use metallic or holographic or whatever the shit this is, <laughs> vinyl, it catches on fire, guys. <laughs> Kenzie goes, what's that smell? <laughs> I opened it, and there was just little... <laughs> I was like, what's happening right now? Oh, no. So, it's like, you can't... I'll take a picture oh, and post it, but God. there's little little parts that are burnt. They're oh, burnt off God. forever. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't Surprise. even <laughs> think about that. Don't put... Apparently neither did I. Shoot. Holy crap. Yeah. So um, everyone, anyone that's buying from other people, if you're buying from us, please don't catch on fire. (laughs) We do not need that. We do not need that. Um, I'm glad I was the guinea pig. I know. The test dummy, if you will, because... I don't. I mean, think- hopefully most of you guys are aware of stuff like this. I didn't know. But yeah, that thing just straight up... I I mean, I want to say I only put it in there because she's very, like, she can't have anything super yeah. hot. So I think I only put it on for 30 seconds. Okay. And all of a sudden, she she had said it real fast. She was like, what's that smell? And, like, I, I look at the microwave and I, like, open it and the freaking, all the vinyl is, like, sizzling. Like, and there's little, phew, phew, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I think, <laughs> okay, so the good news is I think yours was a test one and I haven't used that vinyl on anything else I've made. Do you have any of that vinyl? Of the like, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I've sent it out a lot. (laughs) Do not microwave your shit, guys. Heat it up on the stove, pour it in your cup. These are not microwaves. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. I gotta send a disclaimer. I'm gonna do like a, a uh, post about it yeah because yeah and Kenzie she's like one of the most I my daughter's seven she's so impatient so like this thing's on fire and she's like give me my hot chocolate You're like <laughs> girl it's on fire like, <laughs> simmer down <laughs> I just like you gotta chill for oh a second God. she's like I want to drink that's it that's <laughs> so crazy I so you know yeah I <laughs> oh my gosh when I was um that's so funny because when I was probably like eight or nine, 
I we had some leftover Arby's roast beef and Arby's mm-hmm. they wrap their stuff and it's like a tin yeah. foil, right? So I didn't wow. I didn't know that this was a thing and I put it in the microwave and I go to click it and it, at the time it was just it was only me and my brother home. My parents weren't home. So I must I don't know, I must have been like 9 or 10. He must have been like, you know, 11 or 12. And it starts popping and like catching on fire and I was like, "Ah, ah," and I yelled for my brother and I was like, "Right, right, come quick." Come, come. And then um he takes it out of the microwave and he's like, you're stupid. You know you don't put aluminum foil or whatever in the microwave. And I'm like, I didn't know that. Was I thing. still didn't know that. Know you can't put foil in the microwave. It's like metal. I'm 32 and I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, Heather. <laughs> oh my god. Did you know? <laughs> I have two other stories. Finish your story. I got to tell you more stuff about how dumb I am. <laughs> that was <laughs> all. So it didn't catch on fire though, right? It like did, you're good. Like, the like everything was fine. Thing, and then you know, it. My brother was like, "Dummy, like don't put the foil in the microwave." And I was like, "I didn't know." And so now I don't put foil in the microwave, but. Yeah, I mean, oh my god. So the other day, <laughs> the other day, I say this like it was yesterday. <laughs> um, the other day, ten so years ago, in my last, <laughs> I wish it was more ten years. There would be more of an excuse. <laughs> um, so not that many years ago, uh, in my last living situation, I don't speak of. We don't speak about Bruno. Um, I had a roommate, Chris, one of my besties. And he lived there, too. And this one time, I forgot what I was cooking, but I caught something on fire. It was a grease fire. And I was running <laughs> to get the water. water. He's like, no, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing? No. And I'm just like, oh, we got to put it out. He's like, not like that. We don't. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, learning. And then uh, I think in the same week, I caught my dryer on fire. So we're just thriving. Oh <laughs> yeah. It was the yeah, universe I don't telling think it was you me. to get it out. It was me doing. It was me doing the laundry, you know. But I don't think it was my situation. My uh, yeah. Anyways, but yeah, that shit caught on fire. The oh whole underneath, God. like it was on flames. <gasps> That's and the crazy. Yeah, there was smoke coming through the doors. Like we're sitting watching TV and we're like, "What's on fire?" Oh my God. <laughs> I was trying to burn the motherfucker down. Um, it didn't work. <laughs> I wanted out that bad. That bad, man. That um, bad. Anywho. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that sums up that relationship. Oh. Um, do you have any more stories you want to talk about? Or you want me to just uh, jump on in to what we're doing? Go for it. Doing today? I think that's all the stories I can handle today. Oh, wait. Cheers. Oh. Cheers me. My love, I like to see your cup. It's always my favorite. I'm what you drinking? I'm using the brine time cups that I got for the guys because <laughs> my wine time one is yeah. still uh, sitting right over there by the sink. Uh, dirty from last night and this morning when I make Fine. coffee. But this is brine time. And I'm actually drinking. <clears throat> it's um, not alcoholic because, well, it's not u- noon yet. I mean, it's close enough. I mean, we could. But I have some... Le- Lacroix. Lacroix. I have some Lacroix. Lacroix. And mixed mm-hmm. in it, I actually have what's called a uh, Milky Mama. So, shout out to Milky Mama, who is a California based um, company ran by a lactation consultant, Mama, who, um, so she makes like you know, she does a lot of courses on uh, breastfeeding and, you know, latching and all like helping your supply. And then she also makes uh, products for, you know, like um, <clears throat> making milk products, <laughs> whatever you call it. Ah, shout out. Yeah. Milky Mama. Milky Mama. I Come love on the podcast. it. And she, Let's talk she to her. Has, I, maybe I should because she's so she's really great. Um, a lot of great advice. I follow her on Instagram. Um, and then the, the treats that she makes are so freaking good. So this is the milky um, or milky melon 
And it's uh, it's just like a supplement that you like. It's a powder you drink. It's so bomb. And then I mix it with a little bit of the Lacroix to get a little fizz in there. And I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with it because nice. my supply. I think you know, Tempe starting lots more solids, and then just her being at uh, daycare more. My supply just took a major right dump. So. Um, you're dwindling. Yeah. You're dwindling. Dwindling. You better put them cabbage in them titties. Cabbage titties. Oh, they haven't heard that episode yet. <laughs> Almost. Well, you guys will hear it by the time this one airs. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, no, that was on the that was on the mom advice. Oh, yeah. There the was birthing episode. So they heard it. Too. Yeah. They heard it. Either way. Surprise. Cabbage put Cabbage titties. on your boobs. <laughs> <laughs> um... I just, I don't even like carbonation, so I don't know why I'm doing this, but I did have a little wine earlier. You know, let me shout out the fact that I drink too much. <laughs> um, but this is a Fago. What's a Fago? Is that how you say it? It's it's like a Sprite or like a fizzy light drink. Oh. I don't know. But I've never even it, heard I just, of that. Is that like um, a Kentucky thing? Or? Yeah, it's probably an off-brown Kentucky thing. I'm not sure. The Ale 8 is like the, the number one thing out here. Mm. I haven't had one of those yet, but this is the cheap shit, like a Dr. Thunder. That was, that's the comparison it. back home. Okay. Is how I would say that. Um, so it's my turn for all you listeners. Um, I'm actually going to be going in the same direction of an episode we kind of just covered um, along the lines of our birthing episode. Okay. Um, but there's a little twisty twist on it. Um, but before that, I wanted to give a little bit of, it's not advice, but just like insight knowledge for those of you that might be pregnant at the moment or getting pregnant. Um, I feel like we had talked about this briefly in the episode, um, with the advice that we had gotten from certain moms and stuff like that. But this is just kind of like a, I would say like a third trimester checklist, if you will, that's like, if you are nearing labor and delivery, make sure you have these things done. Nice. Okay, I like this. I won't say make sure because some people don't want to. And that's fine. If you don't want to, that's totally fine as well. I didn't do some of these things, but they are options. They are available. So I just thought I would like tell you. So I like this. You know, if you if you are like, I don't even know what to do. Because, I mean, I feel like when I was pregnant, I was one of the newer pregnant friends mm-hmm. of mine. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of pregnant friends before me. So, I felt like I was kind of like, I didn't have a lot of people to kind of turn to mm-hmm. my age. Mm-hmm. Of course, I had a lot of family. Everyone was supportive and giving me their input, but I didn't have a lot of people that were just like, I just did this. For sure. Oh, you got to make sure you do this, you know. So um, I didn't do some of these things. But it's as simple as attend a prepared childbirth and breastfeeding class. And they and offer pay classes. attention to so them. If, <laughs> yes. If you, and also bring your partner so they can take the notes. Because, <laughs> because in the moment, you're not going to think about it. About it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So <clears throat> most hospitals or like your whoever your OBGYN, they can offer you these kind of yeah. things and let you know where you can go. But the hospitals that you're going to give birth at, if if you're choosing a hospital, if you're choosing a home birth, I'm sure there's still classes yeah. that you can attend if you want to. Um, but do that. Yes. You know, for sure. if you want to. I will just say if you want to. It's it's just knowledge. Even if you go in there and you think, I already knew all of that stuff, why not go and check it out? Yes, for see sure. See if it gives you anything new. Maybe it'll calm a nerve. Maybe it'll strike a nerve. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. I did a breastfeeding class. Um, I went with Sasha, my friend, um, because I felt like... We just thought it was a comedy show. I don't know. Maybe because we were young, but we were just like, what the hell are they telling us to do yeah. right now? And then all of it made sense. Like, yeah, you do have to pinch your nipple yeah. and shit. So it is what it is. 
the second thing I'm going to tell you, take a labor and delivery tour. Another thing that a mom told us in the advice section when we did our birthing episode, I think it was Brittany told us, take a labor and delivery tour. It's going to give you just that ease of like knowing where things are, what your hospital provides, what they offer, all of those things. It's just something that is going to be peace of mind at the end of the day. And I think that that's important because so many times, like, people are getting into a situation that is just like, I don't know what I'm going into. Like, this is crazy. This can help. Yeah. Even if it's just a little bit. Right. You know? any It's like, obviously. To get you even just a little more familiar (laughs) with (laughs) the loud ass bird. Fucking shut up. (laughs) Oh, sorry. (laughs) I'm a little hurt. I was going to say. Um. Anything to get you a little bit more familiar with what could happen. And like we've said it before, you never know what's actually going to happen the day of. But anything that can better prepare you and get you a little bit more familiar with what may happen, the surroundings, just like what floor you need to get off of at the hospital, like anything like that is going to just make you feel a little bit more prepared for when the day actually comes for sure. And if you're in the Antelope Valley, I think that floor is three. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. Actually, actually, it changed. That's a lie. That changed. Because I was going to say, I don't know that from my experience because there was a whole new labor and delivery mm-hmm. unit. But when I was at the hospital a lot, when my grandma was passing, like when she was sick with cancer, I would always like go to the third floor because they had the nursery rooms yeah. in the old days. Like they don't have them anymore. But it's like you would go and you would see the baby yeah. laying there, and and my mom or my dad would walk me by, and we would see the little the little room with all the little yeah. and all the nurses there, and I'm just like, oh, that's cute. Now if they even tried to take my baby, I'm like, where do you think you're going with her? You got your mind. <laughs> they even tell you now, like, nobody um, should be taking the baby from the room. Everything is in the room. Like, they do everything in, in your room now. It's crazy how things change yeah. like that. Yes. It is. But, I mean, progress, mm-hmm. right? Um, another thing that you can do to make everything easier, I highly recommend this, is pre-register at your hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, trust us. You are not going to be in the mood to fill out paperwork or dig out your insurance card yes. or do anything like that when you get there. Yes. You are going to want to birth a child. Right. You're not going to be wanting to sign papers and do other things, which you still will at the end because there's so many other things that you have to do. Um, but that is something that they, you know, provide and it's offered. So For why sure. not just be one step ahead? That is great. One step ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, so I recommend that for sure. And then if you haven't yet, which hopefully you have, choose your baby's doctor. Um, Just make sure that you have who you want, who you feel comfortable with, if anyone that is going to be kind of your on-call doctor at that time, Mm -hmm. because they will have that in your records so that when you show up, you have your first choice, which doesn't always happen. Right. You know. You never know. Sometimes that's unfortunate, whether it's they're not there whether it's they're delivering another baby, it's it's all mm-hmm. circumstantial, but have that have that there. Um, a couple more things. These are kind of like more for you to do type thing. So pack your hospital bag, mm-hmm. have that ready, and have that ready in advance. You can totally have like, it, yeah. <laughs> a month in yeah. advance. <clears throat> uh, two months in advance, you yeah. know. Sometimes... Things happen, and I feel like you need to have that bag ready more so when you don't think you're going to need it ready. Yeah. You know? Like, Heather, you Uh, had your water break. Yeah. You felt things going on, and you chose to lounge around. (laughs) You could pack your bag in that I didn't have. Some people, six weeks in advance, yeah. (laughs) Go ahead. Yeah, I don't think. You didn't have a bag. (laughs) I can't remember if with Tempe my bag was packed because she came two weeks early and I have a feeling that I hadn't done it. And so the, when, when your 
my water broke and especially with my second one like it's not a lot of downtime you get like my water broke and then the contractions were starting almost immediately and I was trying to hold out and it was not a good idea and so when you're in the middle of contractions or your mind is not there because your water just broke right. there's no way you're going to remember what to put in a hospital bag <laughs> no you're right. That's for sure. And, you know, you can, I mean, moms, most people listening, you probably have heard of Pinterest. Go on there. Yeah. You type, you know, uh, hospital bag. They're going to give you a thousand things. Yeah. I think Diane said it best. You don't need a thousand no. things. You don't. Okay. It's it's unnecessary. But take what you feel is necessary. Yeah. If you want a thousand things, take it. That's fine. You get to choose what you want to do. Yeah. I feel like that's the, the thing about this podcast is... Mom supporting moms. Yes. You want to take a thousand things? Fucking good for you. You want to just go yourself and be like, uh, I'm the one giving the baby. You better provide everything else for me. <laughs> Do you, boo? It's all good. Figure yeah. it out. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, um, we're in your corner either way. So because everyone has their things, that's totally for fine. Sure. Um, but that's just like another thing to, like I said, I feel like so many people are like, when the time comes, I need to get that bag ready. Get the bag ready because sometimes that time comes sooner than you think it's going to come and then you need it ready if you're choosing to to have that ready. Mm -hmm. Another thing, um, if you are choosing to breastfeed um, or if you don't know because some people, you know, they're they're indecisive. Visit with a lactation consultant or a breastfeeding nurse um, if, if that's something you're thinking of or you don't know if you're thinking about it. They do this Mm -hmm. for a living. Right. They have a lot of insight, a lot of knowledge that maybe they will tell you something and you're like, that is absolutely not for me. Yeah. No thank you. Yeah. Maybe they'll tell you something that was like, I was on the fence about it, but now I want to try it. You know, like maybe I will try it. And maybe you are already like 100%, I'm going to do it. And they help you in that direction too. Yeah. So that is something else that you uh, can reach out and get some information about as well. Um, because it's not as easy as you think mm-hmm. sometimes. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I will say in this in this realm of this podcast, this episode, is if you have time, if it's possible, money, vacation, vacation. I didn't say that right. If you have time and it's possible, take a vacation before your baby yes. arrives. The, what do they call it? Like a baby moon, a, not a honeymoon, a baby moon. Yeah, um, just something short. It's it's nice. It's an opportunity for you and your partner to kind of reset and have that time yes. together because you will never have that time together again in your life, right. ever. Yep. Just kidding. I mean, um, but it's true because every time like, you leave after that, that is true. you're gonna have. I mean, either you're taking someone with you or, you know, they're staying with whoever and then your vacation is then spent half the time talking about the the kid that's not with you, right? Exactly. (laughs) No, you made a good point because it's one of those things where I think some people are like, oh, it's fine. I'll still go do certain things. It's like we can get away for a weekend. You can and you will. Like Mm -hmm. if that's what you choose to do, you can get away for a weekend. Your mind is going to be with that. 100%. Um, you are going to be thinking about like, oh, I'm going to do me and this is going to be awesome. I can't wait. And then you're going to be spending that time thinking like, okay, I hope everything's good. Did yeah. I pack enough stuff? Yeah. Uh, is Who's watching them? Are they good? Are they going to call me if they need anything? Yeah. Oh, my God. Maybe I should text them. Oh, my gosh. Should I check them? Yeah. You know, it's take this time. If you can, if it's something you're able to do, do it. Yeah. It's nice for you, for your partner. To just enjoy that time. I think this is a newer thing. I never heard of a baby moon. I would have loved to take a vacation. <laughs> um, which I did not. But Zach always, whatever. Because I always tell him, so, you never took me on a baby moon. And he goes, what do you mean? I took you to Kansas City. Um, and I always correct him and remind him, no, 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 no. Your mom took us on a vacation to Kansas City because he has family that lives there. And she wanted to plan a trip there. And I was like, let's do it. And so his mom planned our entire trip. And we went when I was, I think I was like six or seven (laughs) months pregnant. And I was like, no, that was not you who took me on a baby moon. It was your mom. (laughs) And then we did at least take like a mini, a mini trip um, before the second one was born with just, you know, the three, like 
I I wanted to take like a small trip with the three of us, with me, Zach, and Evie, just to be like, this is probably the last trip we'll have as a family of three. So we did that too. That that was also right. a lot of fun. But yeah, for sure, I think it's very important to establish those <clears throat> those times um, because you know once that baby's there, your life changes. Your life changes for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's very true. Um, a couple things that I added on the side um, that I thought were also important. Um, your car seat. Yes. Make sure that you have your car seat and that you have gotten it The you know, I are all of them? This is going to be a silly question because I just had the one that had the base. But do all of them come with the base? Not all or, of, or them some of them have the base. Um, I think the majority of the infant ones do now so that you can take it in and out of the car and like get it into a stroller. And, or, right. But I think there are some that are not connected with a base. Um, but okay. you can always put so that base just in. get that checked. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Right. We had the base in before, which was, was great yes. because then you just bring the car seat. You have that base installed. Do you have to take it? I mean, now I feel dumb. I'm asking all these questions like I should know the answers, but they check it. The hospital checks it for you and makes sure that yeah. it's safe. Because they won't you let you too. leave. So it's like, like you got to have Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Duh. Yep. And they shouldn't. Yeah. Okay, they won't let you like, leave unless all of it's ready um, to go. Right. So make sure that you have your car seat, mm-hmm. the, the base in there, everything. Um, that's just something you want done and out of the way. Another thing, I mean, Heather, you you dealt with this uh, your your second pregnancy. Make sure that you have your your child care situation yes. set up to the best of your ability because you really don't know when it's going to happen. Obviously, it can happen at any point, at any time when you're pregnant. So you just have to like have those people, the backup, whatever it may be. If you have other kids that are there willing, able to have them spur them up. Yep. You know, um, it's necessary. So just a couple things to ease your ease your mind in those moments. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is birth plan, which we also talked mm-hmm. about. If you have what you want, have that written down, have that in your partner's head so that they can advocate for you. For sure. Um, just to make everything a little bit easier um, because you are going to be very busy yeah, trying to stay alive, pushing a human out of your body. So, so yeah, exactly. that can be somebody else's responsibility <laughs> exactly. to help you remember so those things. You need someone else, <laughs> right? <laughs> Even if you write it down, you pass that note. <laughs> Come on, just have that, have that, so that make it easier on everybody. For sure. Um, but yeah, that's just a couple things I that, that I wanted to add. Yeah, you know, here and there. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps a couple people. If you didn't know you had those options, you do. And there's so many other options um, and so many other things that you can get and do and be a part of. So look them up if it's something you are interested in. Obviously, the Internet is filled with a million, million, million things. With that said... Okay, now we're getting into the real portion of this episode, because that was my intro. Oh, gosh. My intro took 30 minutes. <laughs> Sometimes life doesn't go as planned, and things happen very differently than you want them to happen, obviously. So now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share some stories with you of women who became moms in some not-so-traditional locations. Like, uh, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was pregnant type stories. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Uh, no, they, no, they, so these ones, they probably knew they were okay, pregnant, okay, okay. but it's more of a, they didn't make it to a hospital. Oh no! Or they, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. those kind of things. So if you have ever seen the movie, Where the Heart Is, did, have you seen yes. it? Yes, Walmart Baby. It's a movie that came out in 2000. Love it. Yes, the Walmart baby had Natalie Portman in it. Um, this is a good example of uh, a couple things that I'm going to be getting into today. Um, in this movie, Natalie Portman 
she's, I feel like, I haven't seen it in so long, but I feel like she's left at Walmart from her ex, yep. and she starts living there. Yep. And during this time, she delivers her baby there. Yeah. And then media coverage and everything takes place, and, you know, her life ended, like, ends up changing. But she straight up had her child inside of the Walmart. Mm-hmm. Like, I could not even imagine Crazy. anything of that realm. Like, it just blows my mind and that is probably the best location out of all of the ones I'm about to give you right now because (laughs) the rest gets crazy all right here we go in an elevator (gasps) getting stuck in an elevator is a common fear for many especially when you have somewhere to go or something to deliver therefore You can only imagine the terror on one woman's face while in labor. Oh, my God. Who suddenly realized that the elevator she was traveling in had broken down and wasn't taking her anywhere anytime soon. Thankfully, the elevator in question was in the hospital where she had originally planned to give birth, along with her midwife and a nurse. Oh, my God. Talk about good luck. Sadly... The baby's father was stuck on the next floor, unable to see his baby brought into the world. Talk about ups and downs. (laughs) I'm such a corny person. (laughs) That one took me a second, but it was gold. Um, isn't that wild? Like, so she got obviously so lucky that she was stuck on this elevator with them. Thank God. Oh my God. Thank God. But that is so sad. Could you imagine him being out He's there like, like standing. get me in there, no. get them out of there. That is, it's just wild. It's just wild. So crazy. And even though they're in there, obviously they don't have all they of the things equipment. that they need. Yeah. It's not like they just travel with a fanny pack of epidurals. Right. So I, I don't know. Like maybe they should start. <laughs> <laughs> Epidural on the go. Epigirl. Epigirl. <laughs> just okay. Um. <laughs> oh man. All right. Next one. In an Uber. <gasps> Love them or hate them. There is no denying that the taxi application is one of the most useful services of recent times. However, although they might be cheaper, like a cheaper option with regards to getting you from one place to the next, they aren't really the perfect place to give birth. Oh. No. Sadly, a woman named Erica had no other option when she suddenly realized oh. that she was going into labor and needed to get to a hospital fast. As a result, she quickly rang an Uber to take her to the hospital, only to get in and have her baby five minutes no. later in the Uber. Oh, my God. Yes. I know. It's crazy because some of these, like, this uh, I'm gonna uh, post where I where I get these in the sources, but it's like that was how it ended. I want to know how she got to the hospital. Yeah, did and he like, drive her the what rest the of the house? Were did he pull over in an ambulance? I'm came? sure he like, did. What's but going still, on? I don't know. Yeah, I wish I knew. I wish I could tell Hopefully you. Hopefully, she rated him five stars. It's crazy. Dude, they need to start upping these Uber pay. They need to get them some training for stuff like this because this is insane. I, I picture, like, my dad being an Uber driver right now and just being like, hey, you better, you better close them close legs. Them like, what legs. The are you doing back there? Like, Don't let them no, I'm going to get you there. I'm going to get you there. <laughs> like, it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, that's it's wild. Oh, my it's gosh. Wild. Um, all right. Next one. On a flight. (gasps) No. Flying is hardly fun at the best of times and is actually a stressful and terrifying experience for a large number of people named Rachel. (laughs) For many, the last thing they would want is to suddenly go into labor mid-flight without a doctor or a nurse. Oh, my God. However, for this mom, Christina, this was a real-life scenario. Yes. Yes. While flying with Spirit Airlines, she suddenly went into labor at 36 weeks. She said later, 
The flight attendants contacted doctors on the ground, and they advised the flight attendants to see if there were any medical personnel on board. As it turned out, there was a pediatrician and a nurse. Oh, thank God. Soon after, it was clear I was having my baby. Oh, no. Thankfully, both mother and baby were fine, as the very stressed out flight attendants. Oh, as were the very stressed out flight attendants. Oh, So my everything was gosh. fine. Could you imagine being on that flight? And just so you know, Spirit doesn't have like a like a first class, Spirit like a curtain that you're gonna one. go anywhere. That shit is tiny. <laughs> I, we so we've been flying Spirit the entire time, like back and forth from Kentucky, um, because like he gets really good like prices uh, in the army right now, and that's just how we've been flying. And it's like there's n- no, there's nothing. No, there's no you amenities. in the middle of the aisle. Do you yeah. think they charged her for the no, extra blankets and pillows that she probably had to use to deliver they her did. baby? <laughs> Unfortunately, that is so sad. Shout out, Spirit. You guys got to get your shit together. Get your shit together, <laughs> Spirit. That is so sad. <laughs> they charge for everything oh, else. <laughs> Jeez, that's so sad. Oh, man. That is so bad. All right. The next one's bad, too. You ready? In a Chick-fil-A bathroom. <gasps> Oh, no. <laughs> Bathrooms. Hey, if I was going to choose a fast food choice, I would choose Chick-fil-A over most bad. of them. <laughs> like, you think that baby gets say, Chick-fil-A for life would, now? Yeah. I sure hope Born so. Born in Chick-fil-A, if not, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A reach for out. Life. Reach out. Yeah, seriously. They better name this kid Chick-fil-A. Ch- Chick-fil-A. Like, her name should have been Jack. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Chick-fil-A Griffin. <laughs> okay. Bathrooms have been a popular place for women to give birth over the years oh. with a clean and sterile atmosphere that's something soothing, somewhat soothing. However, although a bathroom might be a reasonable place to deliver your baby, a Chick-fil-A bathroom is a different kettle of fish altogether. Sadly, for Griffin, this actually happened, and she had no other choice. That's right. While she was driving, on her way to the hospital, she knew she didn't have time. So she made the brave decision to stop at a Chick-fil-A, ask to use the restroom, and give birth right there on the bathroom floor. No! Oh man! Uh, At that point, like, do you think your car is better than Chick Fil A? Like, oh my god! At what point do you think she's like she's driving? She's going, no, not a McDonald's, not a Wendy's, yeah, (laughs) not an Arby's, Chick Fil A. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. That's so great. I gotta say, like I said. I would choose Chick Fil A over. All, I mean, probably every other. Do you think after joint, one honestly, of the workers helped point. deliver her baby, they said, "My pleasure"? <laughs> that was so good. Hey, that was a good one. Ooh, For those of you so who've good. never been to a Chick Fil A, extra sound. Whenever you say thank you to any Chick Fil A worker, they do not say you're welcome. They say my pleasure. <laughs> yes, too many times. Every single thing. I would like a Coke. Yes, that's my, my pleasure. pleasure. Okay, pull up. That's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to help you at the front. My pleasure to give you your bill. It's my pleasure to take your card. And my pleasure to swipe it. And my pleasure to give you your food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, sure. I love it. Um, no, they are they are awesome. I love honestly. Chick-fil-A customer they are service. Trained and it's, yeah. Great. Yes, absolutely. Unlike any other. So, yeah. Um, and I've never had a complaint in their bathroom. So, got to say that. Um, never had to deliver in a bathroom. So, there's that. All right. This is a two-parter in this one because this I just found crazy. Oh, boy. In a tree. <gasps> what? In a tree. What? In a tree. In a tree. Yep. hmm Yeah. This wasn't from here. Mozambique had a... Severe storm, <gasps> a situation where 
there were the worst floods in history. Oh, my God. And during this time, during this time, it just got crazy. So I'm going to read you two stories. Oh, my God. Where this exact same flood, two mothers no. had their child, their children in a tree. So the first one. Back in 2000, supermom Sophia Pedro gave birth in a tree to avoid swirling floodwaters on the ground in Mozambique. Her daughter, Rosita, made her appearance just moments before a South African helicopter crew arrived to rescue the mom and baby from the tree's branches. Oh my God. When the crew arrived, Rosita's umbilical cord was still attached. <gasps> After her dramatic helicopter rescue, resting with her healthy baby on high ground, Pedro could only tell reporters... I'm so happy. Oh my Ooh. God! Man, Super I'm getting to my period because everything I say, I cry. That's insane. Seriously, isn't that insane? And here's another one. So that same storm, that same flood, um, which la- it says it lasted five weeks. No. The rainfall was resulted in one of the worst floods in history, taking the lives of 700 people oh my gosh. and over 20,000 cattle. Oh my Due to the floods, family across the count, uh, the country had to climb trees and tall structures in order to survive. One of these people was the heavily pregnant Carolina, who, along with her family, climbed a tree to escape the crocodile-infested waters. No! However, while in the tree, Carolina went into labor, later giving birth to a healthy daughter. The birth attracted a lot of attention across the world, which later resulted in numerous donations to Carolina and her family. Oh my gosh. I could not even I imagine. Can't even that imagine. is just so I can't crazy. even imagine climbing a tree while pregnant, let alone then having to go deliver the baby. I can't. That is amazing. Women are amazing. Women are amazing. You do do what you gotta do. <laughs> How many times am I gonna sing it like that? Do what you gotta do. All right, you ready for another crazy yes. thing? This is crazy in an entirely different aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Birth while asleep. What? Believe it or not, one woman actually managed to give birth to a baby. While she was sleeping. What? Yes. 23-year-old Alice Payne had earlier suspected that she was about to go into labor after suffering a few minor pains. She then made her way to the hospital, who told her that she wasn't going into labor, but it would likely happen soon. So she should stay and rest. Payne was then given a hospital bed where she dozed off, only to wake up a couple of hours later... With a newborn baby between <gasps> her legs. Some people really will sleep through anything. Oh my God. I mean, like, what do you, do you not have a pain tolerance? I'm sorry. People are like, oh, I have a high That's pain insane. tolerance. I have a low pain. This one just didn't have any. Like, how did you not know that a, a child just came out of you? That is That's crazy. crazy. That is just. I thought you were going to say like it was like a woman crazy. in like a coma or something. And then like like everyone was like helping. Like no. like she just fell asleep by herself in a bed and woke up and there was a baby. That's not it. But that also would have been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I'm sure now we got to look there, it up. I'm sure I'm there's sure got to be. Happen. There's got to be. That's so crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um. Yeah, wild, wild. All right, we're almost done. Here's another one. On a train, on a train. Um. Yeah, on a trip from North Carolina to New York, Shira Lowe, whose due date was March 4th, realized she was in labor. Man. She'd been visiting her four-year-old daughter and husband, who'd just started a new job, and was on her way back up north on her own. In the cafe car of the Amtrak train, <gasps> Lo turned to a fellow passenger and said, I think I'm in labor. Oh my Can you God. please help me? <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, the, no? <laughs> the train... <laughs> no. Uh, that's good Good for you. I'm going to go sit somewhere else. No, I'm just kidding. The train's conductor planned to make an unscheduled stop 10 minutes away so that Lowe could receive medical care. But 
the baby couldn't wait that long. After just 18 minutes, Trinity Christina Stokes was born. The baby girl's middle name, Christina, is in honor of the brave passenger who stayed by Lowe's side through the entire ordeal after she asked for help. I just got goosebumps. That's so sweet. I know. I, I'm i like, every single time I speak, I start to cry because I'm just like, it's, yeah. My periods are coming. My periods are coming. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everyone who's a little bitch and doesn't like to hear that. Whatever the fuck you guys. Okay. Okay. I have one more for you. And I saved this one for last because I just saved it last. That's all. Um. <clears throat> I don't know why it's so hard to read. Because it's just like, what the fuck? (laughs) Okay, sorry. I kept staring at it like, just say the words. It's fine. You've learned how to read before, Rachel. In a lion's den. (gasps) What? (laughs) Of all the places in the world, a lion's den is probably one of the last locations... You'd choose to deliver your child. Sadly, this happened to 32-year-old Mangubin Makwana, who gave birth in a wildlife sanctuary. (gasps) Thankfully, Makwana was inside an ambulance which pulled into the sanctuary after realizing it was too late to get her to the hospital. In the end, both the mother, the baby, the ambulance staff, and the lions were unharmed. Oh so my it wasn't God. as bad. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Seriously, the last place you would ever, ever, ever. Oh, my gosh. Luckily, she was in the ambulance. But when, when I first saw it and I was just like, what you mean in a lion's den? Oh, yeah. Because, no, thank you. But still, still wild. Um, that's that's crazy. So these are all just a couple, uh, a couple, uh, many Many things of, I hope you guys don't go through this. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you Dang. make it to whatever your choice of of delivery uh, room, delivery room, not delivery room, but like wherever you choose to have your baby, I hope you make it there, whether it's in a hospital, in your in your home, if you choose something else. I, I don't think we choose lion's I dens on purpose. I wouldn't recommend a lion's you know? den. But um, yeah. I, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't put it past people either. <laughs> so who knows nowadays? They're like, oh, these are options. We don't take these as scary <laughs> things. We take it as like, oh, sign me up. A train? Cool. Um, so just wanted to, to put some of those out there because it's crazy. And all of these, all of these were awesome as well because they all made it. Yeah. They all were healthy and and made it through. The mother and the baby made it through the situation. And it's crazy because obviously we live right now in a, in a time where we have hospitals and we have rooms and we have medication and we have uh, all of these things to help assist in the labor and delivery. Right. Um, Right. You know, procedure. And that wasn't a thing right. before. True. You just had a baby and that was that. You didn't get to take the pain away. Right. You didn't get to, you know, do other things that you, you have nowadays. So it's 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 wild. Um, but it just shows that yes, even though you have a hospital, which is amazing, you can also have your baby <laughs> in a Chick-fil-A if you would like to. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I don't know if I recommend it, <laughs> but it's an option. <laughs> like, that's where you're going to pull over. Props to you instead of Walmart or McDonald's. <laughs> oh, man. That was yeah, awesome. So that was so that's my, cool. That's my episode for I loved today. It. For today. I loved it. Little baby. Little baby. <laughs> yeah. Not as, not as, uh, Long as all the other ones recently, because I feel like we've just been dropping two hour episodes. But here's a short and sweet little episode for you guys just to get you through your week. <laughs> I was like, I feel like all of our mom topic episodes are going to be two hours. Oh, for sure. We just have so much to say constantly. I mean, and it's a mom cast. So, yeah, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. I, love though. It. I, I loved it. it. But um, if any of you yeah, guys and I'm if glad. any of our listeners have unconventional places they've given g- 
given given birth please write in and let us know because that that would be so cool we'll share it on the podcast that would be awesome if anyone has given birth in a tree we want to hear about it in a tree if anyone has given birth in uh oh live in a tree i mean could happen (laughs) i'd be down though um, I will say I should reach out to one of my old friends um, from when I worked at the city because her sister had her child in the bathroom <gasps> and it was she didn't even know she was pregnant. What? See, those are the ones that are like the oh, my gosh, I didn't know I was yeah. pregnant. Those those ones are insane. Yeah, do that episode. Do oh, that one. That man. one absolutely is insane for sure. That's a crazy one, too. Let's bring it all. Man. We got nothing but time. Time. Yeah. Um, but that's it. That's it for today. So you I love guys, it. uh thank you for listening. Yeah. I'm like, that's just short and sweet. And um I mean, real quick before we go, which like is there not on not on this list? Like what do you think the craziest place to like give birth would be? Like in your thought process right now? I'm thinking like on like the very top of like a skyscraper or something like the top of the Eiffel Tower or something that would be so crazy what? scary. <laughs> just, just don't do that in the first place. What are you talking about? I don't, just know don't why do that it. Popped into my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Don't do that ever. Okay, I won't. Promise. I mean. You have to like read a read a paper like before you go on a roller coaster that says, "Hey, if you're pregnant, don't do this." Don't like, do and you're like on oh, no, a skyscraper, I like, know, bitch, just don't do it. <laughs> Crazy man. Crazy Some people man. are ballsy. These women be ballsy. I know. <laughs> um, that's crazy. I don't even know. I don't even have an answer to my own question <laughs> because instantly, <laughs> I'm just like. Giving birth anywhere is just terrifying. I know. So, whatever. Um, Best case scenario uh, is like giving I guess birth one in of my sleep. things is like I would abs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That girl knew what she was doing. I give birth in my sleep. Um. How do you sleep? <laughs> I don't know. Because like, how was her body just that? pushing for her? Like she didn't have to push. Like what was going on? My brain's crazy because I'm like, has she had eight kids? Like, yeah. did it slip out? Maybe. Like that Dane Cook skit Maybe. where it's like Stargate and you like, yeah. like walking out. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that's what it was. Um, I'm going to get get canceled for saying Dane Cook on the podcast. <laughs> um, Yeah, but anyways, that's it. You guys, you know where to find us. I think you've all been listening long enough. Find us on social media. Wine time. Wine underscore time underscore that's wrong how do you say it i did it why <laughs> underscore time underscore yeah. pause yes right who cares we're not even gonna do that this time i was gonna this say isn't that it that. i was like now guess I'm what wine buckets me. you're off the hook y'all know where to find it us is. that's what we're gonna leave it at what rachel said y'all know where to find us that was fun that was fun uh we will talk to you guys next time on wine Ooh, time wine. Wine, 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 time 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 one 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 time time uh and next time it's gonna get a spooky spooky <laughs> spooky 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 oh i will say because i feel like this is gonna come out around the time i'm probably gonna cut what i just said but we are going to be doing a live episode, a live audio episode. Yeah. You guys have to tune in. Yeah, um, Find us on that Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and everything because you going to come and listen and it's going to be awesome. And we're going to be telling some spooky, spooky, scary, scary stories. Love it. Guys. Spooky, spooky, scary, scary. I like it. <laughs> okay, I'm done talking like that. But until next time, we will talk to you later. I need to log off. I'm tired and I'm starving. So I need to go to bed. At All right, wine PM. buckets. <laughs> 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 I was gonna break. I know. I thought that was totally gonna break. <laughs>